Before we take questions uh, for Twyla, she is going to have a few words for you. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here, um, especially those of you that are here in Atlanta as we prepare for a really difficult match against Japan. Before uh, Haif, like he said, opens the floor for questions, I just wanted to quickly address uh, Corbin's social media interactions. It is disappointing when somebody falls short of the very high standards that we set within this team. This team has always been a beacon of respect, inclusion, and demonstrated great allyship through actions for underrepresented and marginalized groups, including the LGBTQ plus community, and we will continue to do so. As Lindsay and Alex mentioned, this team has never shied away from hard conversations. And today we're here continuing to work on getting better, continuing to work on preparing ourselves to make ourselves proud, make our fans proud, and put ourselves in the best position to continue to look towards success as we start this tournament. Thank you, Twyla. Before we take questions, just a message to our friends online. We got a lot of people in the room, so most of the questions will probably come from the room, but if we have time to get to online, we will. Um, Quick housekeeping item. We are up to 48,452 tickets as of 9.31 a.m. That is about 1,000 off the all-time record for uh, a friendly match in the United States. Should we play in front of more? Uh, but that wasn't friendly. Uh, and uh, we'll probably get break it. So we'll know tomorrow, which will be awesome. Uh, let's get to 50. Uh, all right, so questions for Twyla. We don't have a mic here today, so we'll ad hoc, as you can see. But uh, questions for Twyla, please raise your hand. Go ahead, Lady. Um, Twyla, this is obviously your final camp in this position. Just how has this experience been? Has it been different than you thought? How is it maybe different than what you thought? Yeah, I think uh, when I started, it was about just doing the next best and right thing for this program, and it wasn't about expectations in the long term. And over time, you know, this it went from a few months opportunity to what looks like it's going to be about a nine month opportunity. Um, so I guess I would say I've just taken one step at a time and really done my best to try and enjoy it, be as present as I possibly can. I'm really proud of. Um, the job that we've done and obviously there's there's some next steps to take care of and we're very serious about taking your care of business this tournament as we always are but it's not just me it's it's an entire staff of people that have committed to seeing this program through the uh, interim time frame and helping to really set this program up for success a program that's long been decorated um, with many many positive attributes wins um, a really strong history, and it's been a commitment from so many different people to move this thing forward, including the players, um, but also the entire staff and delegation. Go ahead, Doug. Have you enjoyed the experience? And how will your focus change in the next role? Yeah, I think I've mentioned this a few times. I've, I've been a head coach before. I've been an assistant before. Obviously, completely different levels. I've always enjoyed both. I had no idea how much I would enjoy this experience. Uh, it's been one of the greatest privileges of my life. And joy comes to you know your, your perspective, how you approach things, but also the people that you're with. And I have been surrounded by incredible people in this delegation on the team, had the opportunity with some of the people in the room to work with. And uh, people and the experience is where the joy comes from. Go ahead. Um, with some of the younger players, at this stage where you know there's a limited number of camps before the Olympics, how much discussion is there about like perform well and we can without promising anybody anything, you know, realistically how much evaluation is going on with the eye towards the Olympic roster as opposed to afterwards the next four years? I think the short answer to that is that there's always uh, immediate and long-term goals in a federation, within a team, within a coaching staff, trying to prepare. That's The job is always immediate and the future. I think uh, these, all the players that are here wouldn't have been called in if they, if they weren't ready to be here. That's something that's really important. Um, but with all players, all players, especially less experienced players, they don't get into one camp. Uh, just because of one performance and future decisions aren't usually based on one camp. Obviously the context of Olympic roster and things like that 
coming plays uh, plays a hand, but it's really important that all players that are new are onboarded appropriately. I think you guys have seen that with some, we've taken a really slow approach and it's benefited them. For some, we've accelerated that just a little bit, but there's certain boxes we want to tick with everybody to make sure they have a really good shot of bringing who they are and what they bring as players into the structure that's provided for them in a really positive way that sets them up for success. So I'm balancing, we are balancing all of those things, the immediate, the Olympics, uh, an eye to the future, I would say. Um, but also taking care of the people that are here that have earned the right to be here and make sure that they're set up to have success. Go ahead. Here I mentioned um, Asia Missionary, uh, Torquay Town, and Kenny Soul for tomorrow. Uh, almost breaking the record for President Blazer in the U.S. for the U.S. Olympic team. How does that kind of validate the Pacific Division Blazer tournament in Atlanta? That was the second part. Yeah, I think anytime you can play in front of a a large crowd that's really exciting. We want to play for our fans. We feed off their energy. It's an amazing experience to be um, in a stadium and know the full amount of support that's behind you. But also to do that in you know what will be the future home of US soccer is really special. This is a community that we want to embrace. We want to be involved in. Uh, it's it's going to be a joint effort to make you know this the center of US soccer. And uh, we're just really excited about everything to come. Yeah, I think uh, Japan is a really formidable opponent. Um, they have the ability to play a variety of different ways. We saw them play a very distinct way at the World Cup uh, where they sat off a little bit more. They're also very, and look to counterattack. They're also a very technical team capable of like longer possessions of buildup. They have dangerous threats as individuals in a variety of different places. And, you know, we've seen them play a five back against us the last time we played them. Uh, they played with, they built with three for a lot of the World Cup. They're currently recently have been you know, building with four and something that makes them a challenge is that they do all of those things well. So as we work through what we expect, what we'll do, what our what if scenarios, we call it within our team, uh, there's a large variety of things to cover um, and they're dangerous at all of those things, but that's exactly what we want. These are the type of challenges we love. Our team is really excited to step on the field and test some of the things that we've been working on against a really formidable opponent. Lincoln, let me go to uh, online and we'll come back. Um, let's go to Kyle Bond. Go ahead, Kyle. Hold on. Go ahead, Kyle. Great. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, Coach, uh, first, are, are you able to share anything on the availability of Cat and Mal as far as what they're able to give um, as they continue to, to get back to full match fitness? Um, and I also wanted to ask you about Jenna Nyswanger. You've spoken in the past about how versatile a player she is. Do you feel like that's something that you guys want to make use of moving forward? Or do you feel that her path is more of, hey, we want you to do this one thing great? Uh, Kat and Mal are both available. Uh, they've been participating in training at a varying level of degree, but that's just about their health and safety and making sure that they continue on the progressions that they're on. It's difficult to go from club to national team, back to club, and uh, we're cognizant of that and want to make sure that we're putting them in the best position you know, to stay healthy and be, uh, be all that they can be as they continue to you know, progress in their own steps. Uh, but they are both available. And sure. Jenna, Jenna uh, is a very versatile player that will always uh, be part of you know, one of her strengths. Um, I think she's very talented in multiple positions, some positions we haven't seen her play yet, and I imagine she will play at some point in her career. Um, yes, and she has been used in multiple positions and will continue to be used in multiple positions. Let's go to Jeff Carlisle. Go ahead, Jeff. Thanks, Aaron. Hi, Twyla. Um, I was wondering, you know, in, in light of the reaction to, to Corbin Albert's social media activity, to what extent was any thought given to removing her from the roster and how might what's taking place impact her or playing time tomorrow? So there's been several conversations about, um, several internal conversations about this that will remain internal. And then in terms of you know talking about lineup and playing times and things like that, I think as you've probably gathered watching from my interim time here, I don't typically talk at all about who will be playing and who won't be playing. Um, and Corbin is available for this tournament. Henry Bushnell, go ahead. 
Thanks, Aaron, and Carla, I appreciate your time. Um, just one other follow-up on Corbin. I know she posted the apology, and I know you said that things are being handled internally, but um, does she plan to like, do anything publicly to address the, the harm that some of her social media activity has done and, and just address the, the questions that, that, that fans have? Um, or has she done anything internally that you can share? I won't speak on behalf of Corbin. Those are things that uh, will be her decisions in the future. In terms of internal conversations, there's been quite a few internal conversations. Um, as I've stated, those things will stay internal. Thanks, Henry. Go back to Lakin. Um, more of a kind of offbeat question, just given that today is the women's final four, and this team has obviously always been about lifting up other women and other women's mm -hmm. athletes. And just what do you make of the way that like, Caitlin Clark and you know her peers have totally just galvanized the country and made people fall in love with women's basketball and just women's sports? Yeah, I think I haven't personally had a chance to watch as much as I would like to, which is been disappointing. Uh, it's just so exciting to see the level, you know, of um, competition that's out there, the variety of types of exciting and entertaining players there are, the amount of media attention that is uh, on women's basketball at the moment. I hope to continue to see that and continue to see that across women's sports. Uh, and it is, it is funny when you hear, I might be working on, you know, film or something like that and hear like a roar from another room and, and understand that they're watching, you know, other women play sports.